This is the Philips award-winning LED light bulb. This is currently the world's most efficient A19 form factor light bulb. So that includes all incandescence and complex fluorescence and also LED bulbs. This bulb has an overall efficiency of 94 lumens per watt while consuming 10 watts of electricity for a total light output of 940 lumens. That means this bulb is actually slightly brighter than a 60 watt incandescent bulb, but like I said, it consumes 10 watts of power, so it's a very efficient bulb. According to the manufacturer's literature, it's rated for a 30,000 hour average lifespan, which is going to last you for up to 27 years, according to the box. Um, it has a very high color rendering index of 92. That means that all colors in your room are going to be accurately represented by the light that this bulb casts. Um, it also operates very cool. Um, after this bulb stabilizes the temperature for about an hour, the heatsink does become too hot to really hold on to, but it's still cooler than other bulbs that I've tested. Uh, right now it's been operating for maybe 20 minutes and it's just warm to the touch, no problem holding your hand on it. Up here at the heatsink, it's a little bit hotter but still no issue. So this bulb operates very cool and you can see that it doesn't even have any fins on the heatsink. As with the previous version Philips LED light bulb, this uses a remote phosphor technology. That means that behind each one of these yellow lobes are LEDs that do not emit white light. In the previous generation, there were six blue LEDs behind each one of these yellow lobes, and then the phosphor in the yellow lobes would re-emit that blue light as white light that you desire. This uses the same technology, but instead of having six blue LEDs behind each one, as with the previous generation, this uses three blue LEDs behind each one, mixed with three red LEDs, to give you the light that you desire. And that contributes to the overall color rendering index of 92, which is much higher than the previous one, which I believe was rated at 80. So if I were to pop off this lens, you'll see the LEDs behind. Now if I adjust the camera so you can see what that looks like, you can see the separate LED dyes behind the lobe. And these are the LEDs that emit the light. When you put this on in front of it, then it's white again, of course. So that's how this remote phosphor bulb works. Um, a word of caution, don't look directly at the blue LEDs because they can actually cause photochemical de degradation to your retina. So it'd be wise not to look directly at that. I'll go ahead and adjust the camera back so that we can see what we're doing here. And then just snap back, snap the uh, cover back on. Okay, another feature of this bulb is it's dimmable, so I have a dimmer, and of course I can turn it down. And it dims, fairly dim, the light color actually becomes pretty ugly um, as you have it dim. Right now it's, uh, I don't even know how to describe the color, it's kind of a yellowish, bluish gray color almost. Um, so it's not that great. It almost has a pink hue to it also, from the red LEDs. So really the dimmability of this bulb is not that great. Um, at full brightness, of course, it's fine. And then, you know, going down maybe halfway from there is okay also. But really the dimmability is not something that's a strong point of this bulb. At least not for my tests right here. So that's just something to take into consideration. I'm going to take this time to compare this to the first generation Philips LED bulb. So what I have here is the 75 watt equivalent first generation LED bulb. So this is the one that has the six blue LEDs behind it with no red ones. This is the one that has the red ones. Uh, this bulb puts out 1100 lumens, this one puts out 940. So this one is only 160 more lumens, but it takes seven and a half more watts, so 17.5 total. Uh, the design is very similar, uh, other than the heat sink having the fins on it. The lobes, I, th I haven't checked, but I bet they're interchangeable, they look exactly the same size. However, they are a different color, so therefore a different composition. Um, this is very yellow, and this is more of a golden yellow. Uh, but they do look to be identical as far as the size and shape goes. Um, of course the difference being this one has the six blue LEDs, this one has the three blue and three red. So the phosphor is going to be a little bit different to give you the better light quality of this bulb. The color rendering index of this one's 80, and this is 92. 
So overall, this one puts out better light. Um, the design is very similar. Uh, you can see it still has the same cutaway heatsink fin design on the sides. Um, overall, for your money, you're better off to go with the first generation. Because uh, this one is, like I said, uh, more lumens. This one retails for $40, last I checked. This one's $50. So more light for cheaper, uh, but it uses a little bit more power. 7.5 watts more. So it's a choice that uh, I guess anyone can make. But overall, they're both good bulbs. Uh, some people don't like the way they look. Personally, I think they look pretty neat. So it's, you know, whatever your choice is. So good quality light. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have to say about the bulb itself. Um, it's it's a good bulb. It puts out plenty of light if you have a 60 watt incandescent you're trying to replace or a compact fluorescent of a similar um, output. So it is a good bulb. It puts out good light. Um, it's bright enough. But then you come to the cost issue. Uh, this bulb is brand new, high technology, the best that money can possibly buy. Uh, this bulb will cost you $50. Okay, so that's just absolutely outrageous. Um, the previous generation, 60 watt equivalent Phillips, which is the same size, it looks basically the same, except the heatsink's gray and it has some uh, fins on it. That bulb cost, I think, roughly $23 at the Home Depot. Puts out 800 lumens, so this is 940, that one's 800, so it puts out a little bit less, and it consumes 12.5 watts, so it takes 2.5 watts more power to put out 140 less lumens. But, like I said, that bulb is about $23, and this one is $50 currently. Now, I was lucky enough to actually win this bulb for free, so I have no investment in this, and I'm not stupid enough to pay that much for a bulb like this. At least I don't think I am. Um, so that's the cost issue. I'm not sure if this is actually available yet. It should be available at the Home Depot shortly. I'm not sure if it's actually quite available yet. It's not on their website as of today. So it is a very expensive bulb, and honestly it makes almost no financial sense to buy this, considering that you're saving 2.5 watts over the previous version. Uh, there's absolutely uh, no payback time. I did the math, the payback time is actually longer than the 30,000 hour rated lifetime. So your best bet is to get the first generation Philips bulb um, if you want a high quality LED bulb. And that first generation Philips really is a good bulb. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. So I'm, of course I'm expecting the price for this to come down over time, as everything does. But if you do want the very best of the very best of the very best, then uh, you're going to have to spend $50 for it because that's what it's retailing for. So anyway, overall it's a, it's a good bulb, but wait for the cost to come down uh, because really it's just not worth the money. So anyway, that's all we got.